Proverbs chapter 16. The preparations of the heart in man and the answers of the tongue is from the Lord. All the ways of a man are clean in his own eyes, but the Lord weigheth the spirits. Commit thy works unto the Lord, and thy thoughts shall be established. The Lord hath made all things for himself, yea, even the wicked for the day of evil. Everyone that is proud in heart is an abomination to the Lord. Though hand join in hand, he shall not be unpunished. By mercy and truth, iniquity is purged. And by the fear of the Lord, man depart from evil. When a man's ways please the Lord, he maketh even his enemies to be at peace with him. Better is a little with righteousness than great revenues without right. A man's heart deviseth his way, but the Lord directeth his steps. A divine sentence is in the lips of the king. His mouth transgresseth not in judgment. A just weight and balance are the Lord's. All the weights of the bag are his work. It is an abomination to the kings to commit wickedness, for the throne is established by righteousness. Righteous lips are the delight of the, of the kings. Righteous lips are the delight of kings, and they love him that speaketh right. The wrath of a king is as messengers of death, but a wise man will pacify it. And the light of the king's countenance is life, and his favor is as a cloud of the later rain. How much better is it to get wisdom than gold, and to, and to get understanding rather to be chosen than silver? The highway of the upright is to, be, is to depart from evil. He that keepeth his way perverseth his soul. Pride goeth before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. Better it is to be of an humble spirit with the lowly than to divide the spoil with the proud. He that handleth a matter wisely shall find good, and whoso trusteth in the Lord, happy is he. The wise in heart shall be called prudent, and the sweetness of the lips increaseth learning. Understanding is a wellspring of life unto him that have it. But the instruction of fools is folly. The heart of the wise teacheth his mouth and addeth learning to his lips. The pleasant words are as a honeycomb, sweet to the soul and health to the bones. There is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. He that laboreth, laboreth for himself, for his mouth craveth it of, of him. An ungodly man diggeth up evil, and in his lips there is as a burning fire. A forward man soweth strife, and a whisperer separateth sheep friends. A violent man enticeth his neighbor, and leadeth him into the way that is not good. He shutteth, shutteth his eyes to devise forward things. Moving his lips, he bringeth evil to pass. The hoary, the hoary head is a crown of glory, if it be found in the way of righteousness. He that is slow to anger is better than the mighty. And he that ruleth his spirit than he that taketh a city. The lot is cast into the lap, but the whole disposing thereof is of the Lord. As we read this, it teaches us a great truth 
that we are not sufficient of ourselves to think or speak anything of ourselves. That is wise and good, but that all our sufficiency is of God, who is with the heart and with the mouth and works in us both to will and to do. But most read it otherwise. The preparation of the heart is in man. He may contrive and design this and the other, but the answer of the tongue, not only the delivering of what he designed to speak, but the issue and success of what he designed to do is of the Lord. That is, in short, man purposes. He has a freedom of thought and a freedom of will permitted him. Let him form his projects and lay his schemes as he thinks best. But after all, God disposes. Man cannot go on with his business without the assistance and blessing of God, who made man's mouth and teaches us what we shall say. Nay, God easily can and often does cross man's purposes and breaks their measures. It was a curse that was prepared in Balaam's heart to the answer of the tongue was a blessing 